god. The Great Ace Attorney Select Adventure. Oh my god, there's fucking full motion video in this. The Empire of Japan. After opening its doors, a push for cultural transformation brought great waves of Western influence to this far eastern island nation. Finally, they will enjoy burger. The revolution washed over the land, making life in the capital exciting and unsettling. Too much it burger. Was a period of great change, and some was swept away by the tide. Oh. Spooky. Oh! Really spooky. This is just an anime. But for one man, the turbulence of that era was just the beginning of an extraordinary story. Whoa! Gunshot, man dead, man holding gun right in front of him. One million percent he's innocent. I know how this goes. Oh, there's no timer on this one. You're right. Hold up. I can resolve this. There we go. Problem solved. 22nd November, 8.43 a.m. Supreme Court of Dutkir. Defendant's Antechamber 5. I still can't believe it. I still can't believe this is happening. How can it be that just beyond the doors to this quiet little chamber is the highest court in Japan waiting to decide my fate? It's actually pretty believable. What? Oh, no, nothing. Save your glares, murderer. All right, asshole. Don't remember asking you a goddamn thing. <clears throat> My name is Ryunosuke Naruhodo. It's no Phoenix right. I'm a second year student at the Imperial Yume University. Three days ago, I somehow found myself in the middle of a terrifying, horrifying incident. And now, here I am, awaiting my trial. That's enough. Oh. Hello? I'm this man's lawyer. I'll be defending him today. Lawyer? Yes. And until the judge has given his verdict on the case, no one has the right to treat him as a criminal. Oh my god, he's gonna fucking stab him. Technicalities, look at you, you haven't even graduated yet. <laughs> And yet I still seem to know better than you how a court officer should behave. Right, Ryunosuke? Oh, yes, of course. Sorry. Sorry for what? Really said that. Our daddy's taught us not to be ashamed of our murdering. Kazuma, I never meant to drag you into this. I'm sorry. Ha 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 ha. There you go again, apologizing. Just like always. Is this guy like Edgeworth's ancestor or something? You've been all over the newspapers these past few days. You may university professor murdered in cold blood by student. But obviously, you didn't actually do it, did you? Of course not. You have to believe me. I didn't do it. I could never murder someone. Then there's nothing to worry about. Straighten yourself up. Hold your head high. You mean, I believe you. I know you're innocent, Ryunosuke. Kazuma Asogi, my best friend. And he's also in the second year at Yume University, but he's far more clever than I, a star student, in fact. He's even a qualified lawyer. Impressive, considering he's still an undergraduate. It's not that impressive. The very concept of lawyers is only a few years old. <laughs> you can't really be that good. My qualifications don't mean much, yet. You said exactly the same thing three days ago, but I'm proud to have a friend like you, Kazuma, truly. Three days ago. Yes, that's when all this started. Congratulations. It looks like you're gonna get to study abroad at last. I know, I've been forever dreaming of this day. 
Finally, those government elites have acknowledged my academic achievements and successes in court. So you'll be representing Japan uh, as you immerse yourself in the most sophisticated legal system in the world. I'm really happy for you and proud as your friend. And some other third thing. I want to bring about change in our own legal system. Fuck are you talking about? Your legal system's like a minute and a half old. The heart of the- Oh, we're going to the British to find good lawyering. Oh, yeah, good luck. You know, like friends. Oh, I doubt it would straight after that. You and I saw the same thing. Asogi, may I have a word? Oh, it's, um, two people I don't know. Professor, I didn't know you were coming. Yes, it is I, Professor Manfred von Karma. God, this is so slow. Is there a way to make it faster? Text skip? But I don't want to skip text, I just want it to go faster. Oh! That's not what I wanted to do. I see, I'll go at once then. I shall accompany you. Alright then, Ryunosuke, I'll see you in the courtroom. Yes, thanks, Kazuma. This is awkward. If I may. Uh, yes, sorry. You must be the defendant. Ryunosuke Naruhudo, I believe. Naruhodo, I believe. Wait time is how long it takes for text to show up. Okay, thank you. There we go. My name is... Eugen Mikotoba. I'm a professor of forensic medicine at Yume University. Ah, Professor Mikotoba. I've heard that name from Kazuma before. As I recall, he's been pushing to get the government to agree to Kazuma study studying abroad. Asogi has told me about you. You and he are best friends. Uh, yeah. As such, I feel you should know. Well, as you've no doubt heard, Asogi has been granted permission to go and study in Great Britain. However... If he should fail to defend you in today's trial, he will be shot. Oh no. He will simply... Why would the government do such a thing? Jeez, who knows? I'm sure that's true. Nevertheless, I can assure you that proving your innocence will be no easy task. You see, there are certain... peculiarities about today's trial. Oh? You'll soon understand once proceedings get underway. But, then what should I do? Well, naturally, I'm not going to suggest doing anything that could lead to a conviction. Yeah, thanks, asshole.
Here we go. Kazuma Asogi must not be the defense lawyer in this trial. Of course, as the defendant, the final decision is yours. Alright. This is it. If this trial goes badly, Kazuma's dreams of studying abroad are over. And what's more, I'll be found guilty of murder! And so... Here we go. First trial. Supreme Court of Ju Ju Judicature. Courtroom 2. Real quick, I there's a couple of types of law that are older than fucking dirt. Um, you might might have seen that like article a couple of weeks ago about slave cases, which are, I mean, pretty important in property law, um, because property law extends all the way back to like fiefdoms, like it, literally millions of years ago, seminal cases of property law. And now they're like kind of rankling with the fact that a lot of property law was written about owning slaves, right? Um, but the funniest part about reading these old cases is the names of the courts. Like this kind of shit, Supreme Court of Judicature, it's all over everywhere. The Court of the Queen's Bench, like His Majesty's Royal F Funglers, it's great. So, this is a courtroom. Yeah. I don't much like the look of these people sitting in the public gallery. Lots of military and uniforms in there. The powers that be have demanded that this be a secret trial. A trial that's closed to ordinary members of the public. Only military and government officials may attend. But why? It'll become clear in time. But for now... You need to concentrate. It's about to begin. Oh my god! It's the boy. The court will now hear the trial of Ryanosuke Naruhudo. All right. His name is Ouchie. <laughs> the prosecution is ready, Your Excellency, as is the defense. All right, ask the question. The epic question. Let me go see what that is. Ryunosuke, take Auchi to be your lawfully wedded husband. No, 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 do not answer! You do not want to defend yourself! Alright, let's do it. Yeah! 
Yes! Yes! I do. Oh! This is not good. This is not ideal. Sad. It means you don't have faith in me. You think I won't be able to get you off? No! It's just that, well, on the off chance that things don't go well for me, I couldn't bear to be the reason that you... Oh, I just love you so much. I knew that's how you'd feel. Which is exactly why I decided not to tell you. Gah, that fucking piece of shit. Very well. That's fine, he'll just assist us. Well, 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 says Ouchie Wouchie. Objection! Oh! Make no mistake, counsel. This merely shows the defendant's innocent is so apparent he's confident he can speak for himself. Isn't that so? Uh, yes. Oh no! I'm not confident at all. We should. What if we had said no? Oh, hold up. I'll... Let me get the pain emotes. There you go. <clears throat> I realize you're in charge now, but still, try not to look so bewildered. Hmph. Still broken? Weird. more time. Oh, yes. Nope, nothing. Alright, I can do the job. Let's do some questions, baby. They're gonna do some tutorial on me? <clears throat> State before the court the name of the victim in this case. Well, that's easy enough. I've heard his name more times than I'd care to remember. But, wait. Ugh, I'm so nervous, I can't even remember that. What was it again? Uh, Ryunosuke? Let me guess. Your mind's gone blank. Erm, um, what the scallop? All the relevant information can be found in the court record. Let's go, open it up. Okay, thank you. University collar pin, oh good. Whoa, daddy! John H. Wilson. I found it already. Okay, hold on. Yes! Yes! The victim's name was Dr. John H. Wilson. All right, fucker.
the British Empire. Wait, the Empire still exists at this time? That's crazy. The Anglo-Japanese Treaty of Friendship and Navigation. Uh-oh. You two are undergraduates at the Imperial Yuma University, are you not? Murdering a professor from the very institution that provides your education. Have you no honor? Can you shut the fuck up? This case is coming under great scrutiny from our allies on the other side of the world. The court wishes for a speedy resolution to this matter. Hmm. In other words, our feeble government is scared of upsetting England's policy makers. I'm not scared of the English. And you're a convenient and expendable scapegoat to blame. That's why this trial has these peculiarities, is it? Exactly. Our government needs to convict someone as quickly as possible. All because the victim was an Englishman. That doesn't make sense. You... You think the law really works like this? Like you find a patsy for a... For a case because there's like a white guy involved? That doesn't sound right. There's... Mm, that doesn't sound right to me. All right, we read this already. The British Empire. Wow, it's incredible to think. Wait. That's a fucking British man now. I don't know his name, but still, I should go and say hello. Ah, hello, I'm just a lowly sophomore. Now then, let me pose my next question to you. How did this professor of medicine, Dr. John H. Wilson, lose his life? Uh, well, this is easy. Uh, blood from a gunshot to the chest. Oh my god. Yes! Yes! Well... According to this document, the victim suffered a hemorrhagic death due to gunshot trauma. Learn to read, you imbecile. That's the post-mortem report, I take it. Sorry, yes, that's right, the uh, post-mortem report. In the West, a doctor dissects corpses to identify the cause of death in an autopsy. But here in Japan, a police officer merely inspects the body and draws conclusions that way. Interesting. I wonder if that's still, that's crazy. Oh, I see. This is a so-called photographic print of the scene of the crime. You can clearly discern scorch marks around the bullet hole produced by the powder explosion. In other words, we should assume that the victim was shot at close range. Why? <clears throat> oh, we've never seen a photograph before. It's superior to a drawing. Very well, I am satisfied with your answers. Let us start the trial. T! Certainly, Your Excellency. Uh-oh. Hmm. I think I may have worked out what the professor had in mind. You're the defense lawyer today, not me, but that doesn't mean... Well, I can act as your assistant. Hmm. He has really been sticking his oar in, hasn't he? Uh, maybe, but I will take any help you can give me. My first piece of advice is, rein in that crazy look of bewilderment and control the cold sweats. Only if you rein in that crazy headband and control the cold stares. God, they are fucking homosexuals. The thing is that they're actually homosexuals. Satoru Hosonaga. I'm the head waiter at a western style restaurant called La Carnival. <coughs> uh, are you alright? Oh, whoa! It's a regular occurrence. It really doesn't bother me. Well, it really should. 
As everyone knows, the capital's southeast quarter was developed for foreign visitors some years ago. It's become a very fashionable district now, full of hotels to accommodate overseas guests. This grim crime occurred in one of the district's so-called restaurants, an Occidental Eatery, three days ago. All right. Let's fucking go, baby. Get on the fucking stand. Uh, we'll see about that. It was just after 2 p.m. on the day in question. The lunchtime rush was over, and there were only three tables still occupied. It was when I was in the kitchen, putting away crockery and cutlery. Bam. Gunshot rang out, so I hurried to the dining area to see what had happened. I found the victim, an English gentleman, slumped in his chair, and standing immediately beside him, gun in hand, was the yes! accused university student. Hold on, let me clarify something here. While I did pick up a gun that I found lying on the floor beside the professor, I, I didn't shoot him. Fuck. I believe I asked you to refrain from petty interjections. The court listen, want, wishes to listen to the witness's report of what he saw, you amateur. You are a stupid asshole. Oh, you don't know what you're talking about. Uh, can you wipe your fucking mouth, dude? That's disgusting. No. There was no one else around that table but the deceased Englishman and the university student. Hmm? That's not right. There was a woman. I knew women. That's not something the waiter could have missed. I've been warned about interjecting, but still, what should I do? Interject! Yes! Yes! Just a moment, please. Dr. Wilson wasn't alone that day. I'm sure of it. There was a lady sitting with him at the table. Fuck. What are we going to do with you? With your blatant disregard for court proceedings, I'm beginning to wonder if you're not a fraud. Uh, I'm sure of what I saw. Is there any chance you're mistaken? Perhaps your memory of events is hazy? No. The deceased gentleman came to dine alone. I don't believe it. He's lying. I have a rough plan of the restaurant as it was that day. Please have a look if you'd like to. I'll take it. Back of my business card. You're a conscientious waiter, and a liar, and you're dying. I'm sorry about that. Well, is there a problem? Uh, of course, here you are. Interesting. <coughs> There we go. He's going, he's going nuts. Can we turn it over? <laughs> Unsworn witness.
Oh, come on, don't throw in the towel now. <clears throat> I believe you're innocent. And yet, despite knowing that, you're willing to throw that trust back in my face, is that it? God, they're so gay. If the accused is in fact innocent, then a defense lawyer is duty-bound to prove that innocence by whatever it means necessary. Are you going to abandon that duty? No. The defense pleads not guilty, Your Excellency. We invite the prosecution to stop making empty threats and bring out witnesses. Then we'll see how decisive this evidence is. Ooh. Nice. Indeed. Ouchie, continue with the proceedings. You were warned, the young can be so reckless. Okay, thank you, you little freak. In a few short moments from now, that dump-struck young mouth of yours will be silenced forever. And that dump-truck ass of yours... Oh my god, there's more? What? who are these assholes? Uh, Aisa Nosa. And I am a fine article of antiquity from the efflorescence of our nation, Nippon, and conduct my trade from Rasute, a humble premises in the second district, Curio Koretuka, at your service. Why are they hanging out here? They were eating. Oh, they're the other diners. I habitually take tea of the most exquisite aroma at the establishment in question, always post-noon. And I converse with interested parties regarding the curios with which I make my business. <clears throat> now, you both witnessed the precise moment of this most atrocious incident, is that correct? Affirmative! The enemy unit was seen attacking the foreigner in what can only be described as an act of war, sir! It was that black uniformed rogue infantry man over there who unloaded his firearm, sir! This man's as impossible to understand as the other. <clears throat> but I'm sure I heard a strange noise during that last thing he said. This guy sucks. All right. Sir, yes, sir! Standing by, ready to report, sir! Hmm. Unsavory memories of a most acerbic afternoon. What's the other guy's pun? What is his pun? This guy's yes -a -nosa, right? I was ingesting a regulation beef steak at the restaurant while having a tactical discussion with the old man. Uh, myself, I was extolling the virtues of a particularly fine golden curio to the military gentleman. At that precise moment, a firearm was discharged. I observed the enemy's actions with my own eyes. The black uniformed varsity cadet fired on the English civilian. And from the back, whoa, that doesn't sound right. Oh, so it sounds like he actually didn't see shit. Yes, sir! Affirmative, sir! Whoa, what the fuck was that? Run that shit back? What a time we live in when an English gentleman may be assailed in the broad light of day. But this is ridiculous. I didn't shoot anyone. Is that true, Ryanosuke? Yes! Interesting. <clears throat> Ryunosuke, you must exercise your right to cross-examine the witnesses. Yes! Yes! I declare my right to do my fucking job, sir. What in the name of the Emperor is the meaning of this outburst? I am... Uh, the defense demands its right to a cross-examination. 
Dear me, dear me, let me guess. The Hachimaki headband boy next door told me to do it. How pathetic. Hmm? The prosecution objects. This is a clear waste of time. The defendant obviously has no experience. How could he possibly carry out a cross-examination? How, how could you possibly suck my fucking cock, dude? That's what he said. That's what he'll say when they translate it. Kazuma is so commanding. I object to the rule of law. Dude, me, that's me. Let the defense conduct a cross-examination of the witnesses. All right, let's see what we got. All right, let's do it. I got evidence. I know exactly what he fucked up. <laughs> yeah, I like that everyone's like, you're not, you don't have any, you don't have any training. It's like, we've had lawyers for a month total. What training could we have? Where do you get all those papers? All right, then. It's all or nothing. All right, let's make it happen. I was ingesting a regulation beef steak at the restaurant while having a tactical discussion yes. with the old man. Let's talk to him. Let's do that old presseroni. I hadn't actually thought of what I wanted to ask. Ask about anything that catches your attention. This beef steak you mentioned. Tension! Ugh. Beef steak is a delicious cut of veal, vigorously cooked on a cast iron grill and served piping hot. All right, so that is not true, right? Wouldn't you say veal? I don't know. I was having a burger. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Did you hear that? That child? Hmm. This cutlet. What kind of food is that? Tension! Jesus Christ. Cutlet is a delicious cut of veal, cost and breadcrumbs, and deep fried in cooking oil. Accept your guilty verdict. Oh, can you please die? Yeah, listen. <laughs> Even among people who eat beef, you sometimes you look at uh, a dish like veal and you go, Nah, that's a little much. Okay, you stinking ass bitch. <clears throat> Do you keep, like, a crying noise? Negative. No, like, right there. I was extolling the virtues of a particularly fine golden curio yes. to the military man. Let's talk about that curio. A Koban, boy. Koban? You mean an old e Edo From Edo Pro. The day prior to the incident, a treasure of exceptional value entered my possession. I took myself to the restaurant with a said item secreted in my bosom pocket in the hope of an affluent cognosticine. Cognoscent, appraised of its indisputable value being present. You were hoping to sell your Koban coin? To Sergeant Nosa, who you met at the restaurant. Yes, yes. You were about to assert a penniless soldier would have no hope of purchasing a precious Koban. Isn't that so? Yes. You little upstart cadet! Okay, come on, what's going on here? Are you rich? In any case, the hour was already advanced beyond that of the midday luncheon. There remained a precious few present with whom I could engage in discourse about matters of business. The gentleman aside of me who was grappling with his brazed veal at the time was my sole prospect. Brazed. At the precise moment, a firearm was discharged. I... okay. Yes! You're lying? You're saying you actually saw me at that time? Affirmative, I saw you laughing, cackling. Oh, Jesus Christ. No, I... Mm. It must have been after you heard the gunshot that you looked over to the victim's table. And so what if it was? Hmm. Well, that really is the case. It would mean you didn't see the precise moment when the killer fired the gun. Uh. Arg and double arg. My sixth sense. Sorry. My sixth sense of danger. I picked up the waves of murderous energy radiating from your foul mind. Which means a split second before you pulled the trigger, I was looking right at you, cadet. This is really, we're doing this in court. What is that noise?
Well, I guess we can fucking annihilate him. Okay, come on. I, I know there's like... Go back, go back. I know where it is. Come on. What is the purpose of the backwards sign if it doesn't do anything? Yes! Who else do you see around here in black uniform, huh? Uh, well, this guy, but... It was you, you little weasel! From behind his back. I don't think that's true. You press A and D to move the dialogue. Thank you! Alright, well... Uh, suck my fucking dick, yes! dude. What are you playing at, cadet? What is the meaning of this subordination? Uh, inconsistency, sir. I mean, yes. There's a clear inconsistency here. Tisk, what nonsense. What can this print possibly tell us we don't already know? Well, obviously. That, um... Oh, come on. I can do it. Maybe my gay boyfriend can do it. Oh, please. Surely this doesn't require an explanation. It couldn't be more plain. To spell it out would be an insult to the court. Kazuma, what... What are you talking about? It's apparent from a single glance at the photographic print presented by the defense that there's a clear discrepancy here with the sergeant's statement. What? Sergeant Ayesa Nosa. Yes, well, yes sir, what sir? The statement you just made was this. The, back, the black uniformed varsity cadet fired on the English civilian and from the back the cowardly little weasel. Yes sir, affirmative sir. I witnessed a crime with my own military grade yes. eyes sir. Ah, uh, yes. But no, that just can't be. And why not cadet? Because, because... Because! Take a close look at the print. The victim, Dr. Wilson, died from a bullet wound to the chest. Ah, uh, Sergeant. According to your witness statement, the culprit shot the victim from behind. And that is the obvious discrepancy here. Well, how do you explain it? Uh, oh! What the... What was that? <laughs> uh, there is a discrepancy. Would you not agree, Sergeant Nosa? Yes, sir. At this juncture, that would appear to be indisputable. Uh, until the moment I heard the firearm discharge, my eyes were... Firmly fixed on the delicious La Carnival steak, sir. What? The last testimony the court heard has proven one thing beyond all reasonable doubt. This witness, Sergeant Iesanosa, did not see the defendant firing a gun at all. Ugh, that's... that's absurd! I think the conclusion we must draw is simple. There is no place for an amateur prosecutor here in this grand courtroom. What a fucking... I love him. Oh, he's great. What an, what an amazing little fuck. Oh, what an asshole. <laughs> oh! It's been a complete turnabout! He said it, boys! Play the tape! from just one discrepancy. This reminds me of Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. So this is what being an Ace Attorney is all about! Mm. But I saw him! Yes! Directly at the victim's back. I never fired the gun. All I did was pick it up off the floor. Hmm. Interesting. 
Interesting. Interesting. Was the baby? I think so. <clears throat> Nevertheless, the witness testimony the court has heard was inconclusive. No matter how subservient our government feels it must be to the British, it would be unforgivable to deliver a verdict on this trial right now. Hmm. What is your position, Prosecutor Ouchie? Were not, Your Excellency. The defendant may have fled a tiger at the front gate, but he will find a wolf at the back. My witnesses have further testimony to make. Hmm. Go. <clears throat> well, he fucked up once. I'm sure that he's gonna fuck up again. What is this baby? There's someone poking out over your shoulder. Affirmative! The newest member of the Nosa family to rise up through the ranks, sir. Name, Ido. Aido Nosa. Hmm. Aido Ten Shun. Shut up. Your father is about to quell the enemy. Watch and learn, my boy. I don't know, sir. <laughs> Fuck up. Hmm. That's so crazy, because he wasn't. Yes! Wait, that's nonsense. The victim, Dr. Wilson, wasn't alone at all. Why are they all in on this? Hmm. I wouldn't be your gay lover if I didn't believe you were innocent. Alright, here we go. Can we cross X the child? Yes! That's just not remotely true. Consider this, defendant. Just a moment ago, I blinked. Did you? 
Did you see it? Did you see me blink? How could I? And yet, it is an undeniable fact that I did. So there you have it. What what the fuck are you talking about? No. This guy is such a cracker. Because I'm about to crack this case wide open. Alright, let's talk to this guy. Yes, pointing this gun at the foreign man he was, that young lad in black. That much I said. Yes! You literally just said that was not the case. I noticed a gun at the floor at Dr. Wilson's feet, so I picked it up. And at exactly that moment, bang. A gunshot rang in my ears. Full of events beyond our control, life is our Yoda. In your case, you found a pistol on the floor and picked it up, which pre precipitated in this testing predicament. Conversely, I failed to pick up the Coben on the floor and find myself in an equally testing predicament as a result. Oh? Anyway, the fact remains, myself, I did see you, with pistol in hand standing over the foreigner. That is not decisive evidence. Visual search. Yes! This guy has to be lying here. Attention! Damn it. No one appears to have caught a glimpse of this woman. Hmm. Oh? Oh! What is this, Council? A medical report card. He had an appointment at a clinic prior to visiting the restaurant. Hotak. Shut the fuck up. I would like it. Yes, put it in. Yeah, put it in there. Yes! On what grounds? Uh... I'll establish relevance. <laughs> Let's find out. Objection! <clears throat> you have no authority to refuse a perfectly valid request for the submission of evidence. Mm, very well. Okay, put it in. Youngsters these days are forever asserting their rights. It's a most disturbing trend. True! Kindly add the victim's medical report card to the record. What we need right now is new clues. Oh, we got one. All right, let's check the court record. Yes! Are we sure this isn't taking place in the past? Oh, it literally is. You saw that with your own eyes, did you? The victim, Dr. Wilson, was dining alone. That I did. Forgive me for the position I place you in. Something's going on here. Beef steak. I want to see his medical report card. It's not impossible they're all lying. But if so, then why? I literally do not know. Why aren't you telling the truth? What What do you say, cadet? I clearly remember. There's a woman sitting across the table. For both of you to have failed to see the dining companion, it's impossible. It's not a case of these witnesses alone. The waiter also said the same thing. That is true. Hmm. But I'm right and they're wrong. The prosecution demands proof. Glean some new information. I feel like it changes much. I wouldn't be so sure. Let's check the medical report card. Okay. It's a brand new piece of evidence, so we should examine it in more detail. How exactly? By pressing E. 
Oh, we can flip it around. Okay. Oh, cool. So we have... It's every single technique from previous ones put into one thing. Hot a clinic. I hate clinics. Aren't they all the same? When I was five, I caught the only cold I've ever had in my life. Even though I felt awful already, I had to have this injection in my right arm. I'll never forget it. Most people would give their right arm to have only had one cold in their whole life. Anyway, this is not a clinic where they treat people for illnesses like that. Let's keep looking for clues. Hmm. Well, well, well. What's going on here? I wonder. Dentist! <clears throat> you sound like a model patient. The bad case of stubbornness. And then how about this? Oh. Interesting. Extraction of molar with topical anesthesia. Interesting. No food or drink besides water until three hours. Well, well, well. All right, we've learned much here today. I would also like to check, um... I'd also like to check, uh... The back of the business card, please. Oh. Oh! Well, well, well. Appears as if you aren't really a waiter after all. Chief Inspector, Primary Criminal Investigation Division, Imperial Police Bureau. Interesting. I think he is a bit of a sus imposter, if you ask me. All right. I hope it's here. Yes. Okay. Objection, say it. Koikuta-san, this is a medical report card belonging to the victim. I see, and I don't see. What of it, boy? Comparing what is written on this report card with your witness statement, something clearly doesn't add up. Ooh. <laughs> dear me, dear me. You are not to interrupt court proceedings with your amateurish drivel. But let's see if I can explain in words you might understand. It was after 2 p.m. in the afternoon when the victim was murdered at the restaurant. Whatever he may have done before that time is irrelevant. Hardly, you stinking ass bitch. Remember, Ryunosuke, you don't have to use clever language or fancy words. Make your point. Your Excellency, I believe we're finished here. Hmm. The witness testimonies of the court of heard have been clear and concise. This report card has no bearing on the matter for the simple reason that there is no one else behind this pale-faced crime except this guy. This medical report card has nothing to do with the case. Do you really believe that? What? That outburst half petrified me, boy. Of course I believe it. How could it possibly be relevant? Perhaps because Hota Clinic, which issued the report card, is a dental clinic. A dental clinic? Perhaps if I told you that the victim had just had a tooth extracted. What's this now? And furthermore, if I told you that as a result, the victim had been forbidden from eating. Just what are you trying to say, cadet? He had orders not to eat, so what? It's all written up in here. No food or drink other than water for three hours post-procedure while anesthesia wears off. I can't. Gorekuta-san. What, boy, what? As you just heard, when he was killed sometime shortly after 2 p.m., the victim couldn't have been eating anything at all. 
No! Additionally, there's more. You have assured the court with unwavering self-confidence that the victim was dining alone. But that cannot be the case. Urgh. Because the victim had just one of his had one of his teeth extracted and was experiencing the effects of an anesthetic. Oh my god, they really blew out. Excellently done, partner. Attention! Oh, we got some? What is this nonsense, you little upstart? These are baseless accusations. Look at this photographic evidence. You can clearly see a plate Attention! of food at the victim's table. Use your head. That's the very discrepancy we're talking about. Can't you follow the logic? How dare you! I think it's fair to say that the tables in this restaurant case have turned! Oh, we're, we're fucking going at it. Wouldn't you agree, Ryunosuke? Yes. <laughs> so having just undergone dental surgery, the victim was unable to th eat. Which leaves one very crucial conundrum. Who was in fact this place setting for, I guess. The court will hear the, the opinion of the defense on this new puzzle. I assume you're ready, counsel? Uh, yes? Uh, that means me, doesn't it? All right, the answer to this question is going to be pivotal. This is the start of you turning this trial around. Got it. The person eating the steak at the victim's table must have been... Obviously, it can be someone else who is sitting at the professor's Objection! table. Objection! You will not let this go, will you? There was no such person. Yes, there was, you stinking bitch. Because I saw her. When the incident occurred, we know the victim couldn't have been eating anything, yet we have evidence of a half-eaten steak on his table. Therefore, the only logical conclusion is there was somebody else eating it. We have strong evidence to support our assertion. It's clear these witnesses' testimonies are unreliable. If the court pushes through a ruling at this stage, we will lodge a formal complaint with the Ministry of Justice and pursue a fair retrial, relentlessly. Kazuma. Are you insane? You would take on the government? Don't worry, counsel. I have no issue with you. What do you mean? I have issue with them, the two witnesses on the stand. What are you talking about? We have demonstrated with evidence the victim was not alone, so if it now turns out the two of you deliberately lied when giving your testimonies, you will be charged with perjury. And since this is a murder trial, you will be deemed complicit in the killing. Complicit in murder? No! You dumb, stupid idiots. Negative! There was no mention of this at the tactical meeting! I was just following orders! That's right! Well, well, well! How interesting. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh, <clears throat> uh, what, what is the meaning of all this? These witnesses gave false statements? Is that true, you pair? Just one simple slip of the tongue. A white woman jump scare? <laughs> Come on, yeah. Counsel, explain what's going on here. It's painfully clear now. You tried to prevent these witnesses from telling the truth. Absolutely not! The prosecution knows nothing of this! Then who's behind it? Who tried to make you keep your mouths shut? W -w well um... That's classified! So you're prepared to be tried as a conspirator to the murder, are you? Uh, you, uh, you, you wouldn't, uh, this can't be happening! Ryunosuke. Judging from the way they're reacting to this, I'd say they're sworn to silence by someone with considerable influence. However, I don't believe Auchi had any idea about it. What are you saying? I mean, to wield that kind of influence, there are only a handful of possibilities. It could only have been the government, the military, or the police, I suppose. Well, any ideas about who might be behind it? Well, I would... I, I think I have a pretty good idea. Of course, we need evidence before we make accusations. Remember how we made progress before? Oh, I'm way ahead of you. I'm way ahead of you, buddy. 
Kazuma, I'm way ahead of you. I want answers. If it's proven these witnesses have been manipulated, I assure you the penalty will be severe. Please wait, your excellency. I had no idea about any of this. I swear to every Shinto god, I knew nothing. And what does the defense have to say about this, hmm? Well, your excellency. This is so good. Holy shit. Yes! Surely that would be... Satoru Hoso Hosonaga-san. Hosonaga-san? The waiter who took the stand earlier... Poppycock! What possible reason could the waiter have to make these witnesses give false testimony? Not to mention the fact even a head waiter could not possibly have that level of influence. For once, I would agree with you. If, that is, the man truly were a waiter. Ha! Huh. Come on, Ryunosuke. Time to hit this chord with the truth. The truth about, uh, Satoru -san, Hosonaga-san's real identity as proven by this evidence that he stupidly yes. handed to us. The plan of the restaurant. I agree it shows a great deal of attention, but I'm not sure we can... Sorry, Your Excell Excellency. That's the back of the card. The front. It's the front of the back of the card. Uh, would somebody please explain what this overexcited student is trying to say? Flip it over. Hosonaga-san sketched the plan of the restaurant on the reverse side of his business card. The front of the business card reveals the man in question's profession. His true profession. Good gracious! That's right, Your Excellency. The card reads, Chief Inspector, Primary Criminal Investigation Division, Imperial Police Bureau. What?! The, the waiter is a police detective?! I haven't heard any mention of this before! Why haven't I heard any mention of this before?! The Imperial Police Bureau has immense power, absolute as far as regular civilians are concerned. So witnesses there in the stand... Was it in fact the waiter who gave you your orders? Was it he who told you not to mention you'd seen a foreign gentlewoman at the scene? Er, well... Uh, well, well, well... Inspector Hosonaga! I was worried something like this may happen. The moment you asked me to submit my sketch as evidence, I realized it was a possibility. Yes, I remember now. He did act strangely. I strive to carry out all investigations flawlessly. It's my guiding principle. But I let myself be distracted when I made that sketch. It was unusually careless mistake. So you mean to say you really are a detective? But why would a detective be working as a restaurant waiter? Ah, of course! Your salary must be terrible! I was working undercover. Undercover? Yes. There have been a series of incidents at the restaurant recently. In order to investigate, I decided to get a job there as a waiter working undercover. Incidents at the restaurant? What kind of incidents? That would be classified police information, which I am not at liberty to divulge. However, I can state categorically that they are unrelated to this case of homicide. Hmm. Very well then, Inspector Hosonaga. Alright, let's make it happen. If that is indeed true, clearly you would also have been aware of this person's presence, having served at the table in question. Your testimony did not allude to this other diner. I am led to assume that in your professional capacity as a police officer, you required those witnesses to be in agreement. Would that be correct? <coughs> correct, Your Excellency. Ooh, okay. This is annoying as shit. As soon as I heard the gunshot, I ran out of the kitchen to see what had happened. The victim sat slumped in his chair, and beside him a gun in hand stood the accursed student, accused student. Sitting opposite the victim was a young lady who I guessed to be an English woman. So the truth comes out. 
does Bruno Mars is gay. I immediately sealed off the restaurant and reported the incident to the Bureau. It was then that I received some special orders. Remove the English woman from the scene at once. It was made clear to me... Oh, shit. That the English woman's presence at the restaurant was to be concealed. Those were my orders. But what if this English woman was the killer? I think it would be in everyone's best interests not to pursue that idea. Well, not mine, asshole! The Empire views the friendly terms of its relationship with Britain more highly than anything at the moment. An Englishman has been murdered on our soil. The name an English woman as the primary suspect. Well, without irrefutable evidence, that would be completely out of the question. Shit, we don't have one. So that's the reason for the disappearance of the Phantom Woman in this case. But it is not right! One possibility does spring to mind. What do you mean, Kazuma? Yume University is currently hosting a number of exchange students from Great Britain. And I'm fairly certain there's one of them studying the medical faculty's research laboratory. He's a young Englishman. What? You're a shrewd man. I can see why you're the chosen candidate for the overseas study tour. You mean... When I removed the woman from the scene of the crime, I thought it prudent to check her identity first. Then the court demands you name the lady in question at once, Inspector! The English woman sitting at the university professor's table was a certain Miss Gisele Brett. She is indeed a foreign student studying in the research laboratory of Yume University's medical faculty. What is happening here?! I admit that under orders from the police bureau, I erased all evidence of this lady's presence at the scene and ordered those witnesses to make no mention of her in their testimonies. It must now be up to your excellency to decide how to deal with this situation. Fuck. Very well. My thoughts on the matter are as follows. Thus far, the case presented to the court has been underpinned by a particularly critical premise. Namely, that the victim was dining alone. However, as we have now discovered that this premise is false, it would be a desecration of our justice system to ignore its truth and give a ruling at this point. But your excellency, that would mean missing the noon deadline of a ruling in order to send the telegraphic report to Great Britain. Our own government will surely be very displeased by such actions. Calm yourself, counsel. I will not allow the government of our country or any other to influence the proceedings of my courtroom. Inspector Hosonaga, you will locate this Jezeel Brett and escort her to the courtroom with the utmost urgency. Once, Your Excellency. As I said before, it is my guiding principle to carry out all investigations flawlessly. So it won't be a problem. <coughs> Sounds like it is going to be a problem, ass. Nothing will get in my way. Okay, we'll, we'll see about that. <clears throat> so much has happened already. It's a fucking two-parter?! When we last left our heroes, it was day, or part two of day one of the trial. And I said, will I be able to finish this tonight? And you all said no. Let's get some ouchies going. Supreme Court of Judicature, Defendants Antechamber 5. Excellent work, Ryunosuke, that was superb. Ugh, my heart was in my mouth the entire time. It was almost unbelievable. I mean, looking at you in there. Gay. Oh my god, it really is gay. I think you might have a natural talent for being a lawyer. Forget it, it's terrifying. I don't ever want to see the inside of a courtroom again. 
<laughs> Bitch. Miss Jezail Brett, a student from Great Britain. Is she a student from Great Britain? Time to think about where the sound of the gunshot had come from. Shadow Wizard Money Gang, we love casting spells. Ah! Bobo Invalid, thank you for the 25 gifties. Wow. Oh, it's this asshole. The pair of you make an outstanding team. You've exceeded my expectations, I have to say. Why didn't you expect that he would be able to do it on his own, you stinking ass loser? Yes, it seems you planned this from the start. You arranged things so I wouldn't be able to act as a lawyer in this trial. Our modern country is still in its infancy, our justice system even more so, which is why I believe we need to send our brightest young stars overseas to learn all they can. Okay. Oh. He's so nice. Hmm. So that's your stance. You need to prove your innocence and uncover what really took place in that restaurant. I very much want to know the truth. I have a personal connection to this case. What is it? I knew the victim. As you're probably aware, Dr. John H. Wilson was a visiting professor at UMA, and it was I who invited him. Oh, uh, sorry for shooting him. Anyway, you're about to go into battle. Oh, hi, honey. Hi, honey. Hello. Hi, honey. Did you water the plants? I did. I'm comfortable. All right, let's get back in. We got a Guido. A Guido. Hmm. What for? Well, if you hadn't said you believed me, then I'm fairly sure I'd have been found guilty by now. Look. I have faith in you, as a lawyer, and as a friend. Coming from you, that means a lot. Hmm. And uh, you'll be coming for me, all right. All right, then. I'll save the thank yous for after the trial. You can treat me to one of those Sukiyaki meals I like from Yume Cafeteria on University Street. With an extra large portion of dick. <laughs> they are children. They are literally over a hundred years old. What do you want me to hit on Auchi? The court hereby resumes the trial of Ryanosuke Naruhodo. Naruhodo. 
Ouchie, have you managed to subpoena the witness? Yes, Your Excellency, against all odds. And thanks to a certain young stripling. Stripling. The prosecution is now under a rather painful scrutiny from the government. Uh, sorry. Let the government scrutinize. That's their job. It's nothing to worry about. It's highly unlikely that the good relations we've forged with Great Britain will emerge from this trial unscathed. Will you still think it's nothing to worry about when the new treaty breaks down and our nation f founders? It means flounders, right? Again, terribly sorry. If the friendship between our nations is really so fragile, then the treaty isn't worth the paper it's written on. You really have nothing to worry about, Ryunosuke. What do you mean? A secret trial, anxiety over some foreign government's opinions, a bungled investigation, the big chungus meme. Is this what our nation's justice system is? Is this the Supreme Court of Japan or of England? Okay, all right, let's uh, be, be careful here. Those English, you know, they don't take too lightly to shit like this. By aligning ourselves with this great world power, we'll become strong! Diplomacy has never been more critical! And as we all know, Japan after 1899 was friends with England forever. Steady political maneuvering is what will secure our futures. I won't deny that I'm no expert, I'm just a student, and one who could arguably study harder. But standing here now in our Supreme Court, there is one thing I feel very strongly. A country that failed to uphold the truth in its justice system is a country with no future at all. Well said, Ryunosuke. Despite the wide-eyed look of terror... You little brats! Uh, thank you, counsel. This court is the pinnacle of our nation's justice system and exists solely for the pursuance of truth. With that in mind, this trial will now resume with the next witness taking the stand. Okay. Okay. Women, eh? Oh my god. That's a woman. Well, what a delight it is to welcome such a fine gentlewoman to Japan and from such a distant land. Uh, uh someone bring English tea. So, um, ahem. Could we possibly trouble you to state your name and occupation for the court? Of course. My name is Saruto Hosonaga. We know this already, you fucking... We're not asking you. I've been working under... Oh, uh, yes, yeah. We know all about you already. We want to talk to the lady. You said your powers of observation are the one thing you're sure of. Oh, yes, I think I did, didn't I? Yeah, your description for this amazing sight was simply... A woman. Sorry, Ryunosuke, but powers of observation aside, your powers of description are sorely lacking. Uh, it's because he's gay? <laughs> Guilty! <laughs> <laughs> Alright, okay, okay, okay. Oh? Um, I'm terribly sorry, dear lady, but what? The lady says her name is Jezeel Brett. She comes from London, England. She's a visiting research student currently enrolled in Yume University. Oh my, what a rare treat to hear the dulcet tones of the delightful language of the British people. It was as beautiful as a hummingbird's song. As far as I can tell. 
The detective is translating her words faithfully enough. Yes, I agree. <laughs> You'll obviously do fine in England, Kazuma. Her English doesn't rattle you at all, does it? Nor you. You've clearly been paying attention in your English classes, Ryunosuke. The court thanks the beautiful lady for taking the stand. Now, if we may trouble you to confirm something, Miss Brett. Three days ago, at a restaurant called Le Carnival, a grim murder took place. What the fuck? Ah! Peg Thaniel, thank you for the ha 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 hundo. Truly the peak of voice acting. Thank you, I could not agree more. The court has been led to believe that you were dining there with the victim, Dr. Wilson, at the time. Is that correct? Oi, I got a ball game with Bell Wolf. Oh, you bet that you could walk into the Alvador. <clears throat> she says, yes. This could take some time. So even though she's studying here in Japan, she can't speak any Japanese. <laughs> you got a license for that mask. She'd like to apologize for disappearing from the scene. She says, uh that she was due to make a presentation at the university, so she had to leave immediately. Interesting. When you're the one who engineered her escape. I was just following special orders from the Bureau. Well now, dear lady, would you be so kind as to cast your eyes over this photographic print? Seeing as you were, so unfortunately, a present at the scene of the crime, could it be that your resplendent eyes caught sight of the wicked perpetrator, perhaps? Uh, apparently, it was very frightening. And a sorrowful sight. Do you mean to say... Yes. It would appear the lady did witness the crime. The very moment when the accused, standing right in this courtroom, shot the victim in cold blood. We've already established I literally could not have done that. Did you hear that, Your Excellency? Here we have an absolutely conclusive witness statement. Hmm. Well, fuck. I had arranged to meet for a slightly late luncheon with Dr. Wilson that day. The professor wasn't able to eat, so I ordered myself, for myself only, a beef steak. After a while, the accused came over to greet the professor and they got into a fierce argument that no one heard, apparently. No one fucking mentioned this. Just coming out of fucking nowhere. Then, not long afterwards, the accused took the professor's gun and shot him right before my eyes. I don't carry a gun myself, so obviously I couldn't have been the culprit. I don't think a white woman would get on the stand and tell lies. Yes. I didn't have any kind of argument with the professor at all! Attention. Quiet, you filthy wretch! Look at you, you black-hearted blackguard! Whoa! And look at this snow-white angel! Uh... Buddy? I'm sure even a dark-minded scoundrel like you can imagine whose words the court is going to believe. Oh. We love casting spells. Charlie Outlaw, thank you for the 10 gifties. Didn't get one dodge and chat as simple as that. It's a translation thing. Makes sense to me. You're still making the same mistakes, Ryunosuke. You mustn't blurt out when you're goaded. Oh, I'm goaded with the sauce. That's a lesson you need to learn. But he's so annoying. That's what you all say in my chat. That's what Danny says to me. Of course, I was at the scene as well. I took statements from this lady and the two witnesses who testified before and reported back to the bureau. It was decided that Miss Brett was not involved, so I let her go. Interesting. The testimonies of the last two witnesses were completely worthless, however. But even so. On the day in question, the lady was wearing the same outfit as she is today. Ugh! She doesn't wash? Ugh! There's no way I can do that.
Oh. What do you think the Amazonas call sounds like? Probably something like. What the fuck is happening? <laughs> Eastnick, thank you for the hundo. Thank you for playing this great game. It's so fun watching you play this. Thank you for the hundred dollars. But I didn't fire the gun I picked up. There must have been another gun there that day. And you're right about that, which means this lady was hiding a gun somewhere. Yes, that's what we have to prove now. And to do so, we will need to pull her testimony apart. Oh, a devious little smile. All right, let's see what we got. I will destroy this white woman. I arranged for a slightly Press! Yes! After 2 p.m., in fact. That's quite a late I lunch, isn't dead. it? Shut the fuck up! Late luncheons are on vogue. Isn't that right? Or on vogue. No. Ah! Hmm. A decisive English no has quite a sting to it. He's gonna start being like, no! <laughs> the gentlewoman is currently working in the victim's research laboratory, it seems. It was apparently a daily occurrence they would lunch together. But on the day in question, the victim had another appointment at the clinic first. I see. <clears throat> but she came here on purpose. It actually doesn't make very much sense at all. Why go to lunch with the guy who can't eat? Just call it off for the day. Such wonderful logic. What a shining example of English intelligence this fine gentlewoman is. This guy is a weeb for England. So you both arrived at the restaurant. What happened next? Yes! A tiaboo? No! He was unable to eat, you say. And that was because he just had a tooth removed at the Hata Clinic, correct? That's right. We were asking the woman? Oh, well. Was Miss Brett aware of that fact? It seems so. That would mean... It was you who ate the steak pictured here. Is that right, Miss Brent? That's right, yes. The print you have there shows the table exactly as it was left after the horrifying events. No fear, my dear lady. He can't speak. She can't speak your language. <clears throat> can't argue with that. Bitches love sparkling water. Put that shit in. Well, how fascinating. What is this profound bearing? I think I could figure it out already. The significance of the statement will become apparent when the time is right. Put it in the fucking testimony. <laughs> Gladly, she said. She actually didn't say anything. Which one? The significance will become apparent when the time is right. I could really use that phrase. I'd hope there are some more useful tips you're picking up from this experience than that, Ryunosuke. What a gay little pose. Look at this. Holy, what a gay little pose. I ordered a beefsteak for myself and said cheers over a glass of... Well, I mean... Hmm. There's only one glass. I mean, we could just... That's it? Let me just confirm something, please. It's to do with this photographic print. Just a short while ago, you spoke of the print showing the victim's table at the crime scene. That it was exactly as it was left. Yeah. <clears throat> Does he get better at hitting the table? Because right now, it's not very satisfying. Dear me! What's odd is the defense's inability to express itself. Ugh. Ryunosuke, what is it about the print that looks odd to you? 
Well, obviously, it's the cheers. The cheers? Miss Brett just told us that she and the professor said cheers over a glass of water. But if that's true, where's his glass? Oh, mmm. You're, you're quite right, Council. There's only one glass pictured here. Are we supposed to be impressed by this nitpicking over minutia? What possible difference do those, the presence or absence of a glass make on the case? Uh, it means that she's lying? Of course not. I would never do something so reckless. But there should be two glasses on the table. Or are you going to try to tell me you can clink with only one? You're quite right. I took two glasses to the table. Oi, mate, we're fucked. Inspector, what did the lady say? It would seem that it was Miss Brett who took the glass from the table. What? It was also terrifying everything that happened. I panicked and thought I should try to hide the fact that I'd been there at all. Oh, but you didn't take the steak. Where'd you put the glass? Sorry. Sorry. Oh, please. We must remember that this student had just murdered this lady's luncheon companion. Who could blame her for concealing a glass or two in her state of disarray? What is that what you do? When you get freaked out, you start throwing glasses in your pussy? It doesn't work like that. I do that, yeah. Oh, sorry, Dyer. I didn't mean to call you out like this. You're going to... What did he just say? Hold up. DJ, run that shit back. Oh, okay, good. Exactly how the lady took the glass from the scene. Oi, I shoved it up me gash, eh? It would seem that she slipped it into a small handbag as she was carrying. Oh, damn, that's like where you could put a gun. So the beautiful lady has very graciously explained how and why she removed the glass from the scene now. The glass has absolutely no bearing on this case. This student has been trying to confuse the court, but in the end, it comes down to nothing. No more pretentious accusations. You have wasted enough time already. Get it in the fucking record. No! If you want to pursue this matter further, you're going to need to show that it has deeper significance. Handbag. Wait. The lady put her glass in her handbag, you say? Yes, do try to keep up. It's already been explained to the court that all English gentlewomen carry handbags for small items. Why did we start doing that? We gotta stop doing that. Let me see. A little while ago, Miss Brett stated the following. There are no pockets in my outfit. I have nowhere to hide a gun. But what she forgot to mention was her handbag. In which it would be perfectly possible to conceal a weapon. You're right! Well done, partner. Partner. I had a feeling you'd pick up on that, too. What are you insinuating, you vile blackguard? Blackguard is such a good word. Holy shit. It's really very simple. The gunshot was heard when the defendant picked up the gun from the restaurant floor. As he didn't fire the gun, we can deduce there must have been another firearm at the scene. The true murder weapon, if you will. You can't seriously be suggesting. Inspector Hosonaga. Yes. Did you or did you not search Miss Giselle Brett's handbag on the day of the murder? No, sir, I did not. In other words, another gun, the one that was actually used to kill the professor, could have been hidden in the handbag. Mm. Oh! For some reason, blackguard is pronounced blaggard. You know, I think I've heard that before. I will start saying blaggard. Order, order, order! What is the meaning of this, Inspector? The meaning of what, Prosecutor Ouchie? Why on earth did you not have the lady open her handbag and show you the- Whoa! Thanks to your bungling incompetence, now she has to endure these uncomfortable accusations. Brilliant work, partner. Now we have a chance to expose the real woman behind the mask. Do you think so, Kazuma? 
<coughs> is he okay? <coughs> well, what a sorry situation. Certainly you have no faith in the police. True. As I said, I did not search the lady's handbag after the shooting, simply because it was unnecessary. I ought to thank the student lawyer, really. I have a piece of evidence here I had completely forgotten about. This photographic print. Oh! <gasps> a lot going on in this picture. It's a see-through handbag. Mesh work bags like these are the height of fashion in London at the moment. So the contents are clearly visible. Exactly. So there was no need to search the handbag. If there had been a gun inside, it would have been immediately obvious. As you can see, there's nothing to imply Miss Brett's guilt here. Thank you for helping to prove that, Naruhodo-san. Uh... <laughs> Order, order. Inspector Hosanaga, you will submit that print as evidence at once. All right, let's check it out. Oh, come on. Hi. Huh? Are you uncomfortable? Is that not a comfy spot for you? I can- here. Why don't I, like, fuck it around? Come here. Can you come on down for a sec? Thank you. Keep going. There you go. You can go back up now if you want. You want me to put you back up? <clears throat> yeah? See, much more comfortable. Much better. You okay? Oh, you're sleepy. Okay. You, I guess you can get off if you want off, right? Yeah. Hmm. Alright, there she goes. The court has now been shown considerable evidence. As the photographic print just submitted to the court record appears to have no further significance, I am satisfied there is no longer any room for doubt in this matter, and I must make my ruling. Suck my fucking cock! Uh, Kazuma? I'm sorry, Ryunosuke. Now that the cross-examination of the witness is over, there's no way to force the trial to continue. What? You mean this is it? <laughs> I must say, you put up quite a fight for a rookie student, but the weak are meat while the strong eat. You are wasting your time. There is no way to defeat true justice. A fact you can chew on to your heart's content from the inside of your cell. This can't be happening. Am I really going to be found guilty of a crime I didn't commit? And Kazuma. His dream of going to study in Great Britain will slip through his, his burly little fingers. Is there no chance of turning this trial around? You heard the judge. There's nothing we c about that last photograph the detective proved uh, produced that we can contest. Well? Is that true? That's more like it. Wait! Your Excellency. Ryunosuke? I, I don't think you can rule on this case yet. This amateur <laughs> amateurishness is getting tedious. When His Excellency deems the trial is over, he gives his ruling. That is the most basic protocol of the courtroom. Yes. 
Your Excellency. Just a moment ago, you said this. As the photographic print submitted appears to have no further significance, there is no longer any room for this doubt in this matter, and I must make my ruling. Now that means if there was a problem with the evidence, some significant detail, I mean, then ruling on the case at this time would be out of the question. This is blatant straw clutching! Look at this print! All it shows is the handbag of the gentlewoman was carrying on the day in question. There can be no problem with this evidence! I've got some problems. Hmm. I understand your objection. New evidence submitted by the detective has not undergone the court's scrutiny. Very well. I will grant the defense one final opportunity. But be warned that if I am unsatisfied for your response, the trial will be over with immediate effect. Do I make myself clear? Yes, Your Excellency. Take another look at the photographic print Inspector Hosonaga submitted before. You will identify for the court where in the print we see the significant detail to which you have alluded. It's gotta be this, right? Yes! Look at this here. There's a very unusual mark on the victim's wrist. That is true. Looks almost like a burn of some description. Attention! Dear me, I was pondering what new piffle you would come out with. A burn on the victim's wrist. Clearly that has nothing whatsoever to do with the magnificent lady's handbag. Yes, that is a burn mark, you're right. Go on, Inspector. The police coroner also noticed it when he was performing the post-mortem examination. It was deemed unrelated to the cause of death, so he didn't note it in his report. God, my kingdom for a fucking autopsy report. In any case, we have no idea when the victim suffered this burn, do we? And no possible way of knowing either. Oh, really? Looks like a fucking cow. As Prosecutor Ouchie points out, unless a firm connection to the case can be shown, I cannot allow any further time to be spent on the details of the burn. Oi, mate, we're getting home for dinner. It would seem Miss Brench has a lunch appointment with the dean and other university staff. She would like to know if she may be excused now. Oh, of course, dear lady. Fuck you. What's your thinking on this, Ryunosuke? Do you believe this burn has something to do with the case? To be honest, I'm not really sure. But if I don't keep pushing, then it's all over. So I was thinking we should keep digging and digging in the hopes I might uncomfort something useful. He truly is Phoenix's uh, ancestor. Hmm. Yes, you're right. I am? If we can just link that burn to the case, if we can do that, we might be able to prize this shutting door back open again. Just give up, counsel. I'm afraid that without evidence, I can't allow you to pursue what is little more than conjecture. But if we had evidence? Evidence that irrefutably linked the burn on the victim's wrist to the case, then you would allow it. I would, yes. To tell the truth, I hadn't noticed that burn. But as soon as you pointed it out, what I did notice was the color draining from Miss Brett's face. And she's already white. Okay. We'll come back to this. Postmortem report.
Just don't see anything. It can't be this. This is the, the thing itself. I think it's that. Burn and this trial. Hold up, run that shit back. Round or rectangular? Come back to that. I have no idea what's going on. We are really fishing. All right, let me think about it a little bit. If it feels like it's possible that he like burned himself on a pin or something. My God, got it. Yes. What's this council? Yet another print. Yes, your excellency. I believe photographic prints are an amazing invention. When we humans look at a scene, we miss things. But in a photograph, things we may have overlooked at the time are recorded forevermore. Do hurry up, rookie. What are you trying to say? To inconvenience this poor lady any further really would be quite inexcusable. We may need you to stay with us a bit longer if you don't mind, Miss Brent. You see, it's very clearly visible in this other photograph. How did the victim come to have that unusually shaped burn on his wrist? The reason here is recorded forevermore. What? How? Attention! You stupid asshole! If that's your game, then let's see how it plays out. Show what you mean! What is it in this photograph that explains the reason for the victim's burn? Well, dumbass, how about this? Yes! The beef steak? Close. The metal plate the steak was served on. Bull! As you can see, there's an emblem on the plate. I would guess it's some sort of trademark of Le Carnival. Ah! The emblem on this plate and the victim's burn are exactly the same shape. Ah! Ryunosuke, you genius. I could suck your cock for that. You're spot on. Which means the victim must have suffered this burn while he was present at the restaurant. Attention! <sighs> But even if that is the case, we can't know if it happened on the day in question or not. It could have been the day before or the day before that. It most likely happened at some other unrelated time. Well, uh... Shit, that's a really good point. Oh, 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 oh. Sadly, Professor Ouchie, the chances of that are extremely slim. Why? 
The outline of the burn is clearly discernible. Such a serious injury would have caused quite a commotion in the restaurant. Wouldn't you agree, Inspector Hosanaka? I can't imagine having missed such a terrible disaster. Certainly. But but I would say, looking at the picture of the wound, that it wasn't suffered very long ago. And although it's not a particularly large burn, it is extremely well defined, as the defense just pointed out. This was no mild burn, that's for sure. Can you be more specific, Inspector? Well, let's see. If the plate was around 90 degrees centigrade, a burn like that would have taken three seconds. It's inconceivable that the victim wouldn't have let out a scream of pain, then. Hmm. Sounds like he slumped over onto it dead. You're a detective, not a waiter! He's also a waiter. Yes. There you have it. Something isn't right here. As the detective said, anyone who burnt themselves on a piping hot plate for three whole seconds would scream. There's no question. And yet Inspector Hosanaga never heard the professor scream. Not on that day or any before it. That's right. And the strange thing is, on the day he was shot, I didn't hear him cry out either. What are you suggesting? So Zeta, thank you for the raid. Saz raid. Well, if the professor had carelessly laid his wrist on the plate for anything like that for three seconds that day, that would be beyond careless, I think, counsel. And the rest of us in the restaurant, myself, the sergeant, and the old antique stealer, all of us would have without any question have heard him scream. Wouldn't you agree, prosecutor Ouchie? Hmm? Uh, well, yes, I suppose. So the question is, why didn't a single person hear him scream? Because he was dead. Can it really be true? I'm starting to think that maybe... We've been led into a terrible trap! There's only one explanation I can think of that makes sense. On the day in question, when he suffered the burn to his wrist, Dr. Wilson... ...was already deceased. Counsel, are you suggesting it's only possible that he was already dead? Knowing what we know now, it's the only possible explanation. Passing a kidney stone. Hard leg! How'd Goaty go? When the beefsteak was brought to Dr. Wilson's table that day, the professor was already dead. That's madness! Order, 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 please. Counsel, explain this absurd notion at once. The victim was killed by a gunshot. Uh, that's right. You're absolutely right, Your Excellency. Uh, this is just another ridiculous ploy by the rookie student, but clearly he has no grasp of the facts. No, Prosecutor Ouchie. It's you who has no grasp of the facts. I beg your pardon? As soon as it became apparent that the victim had suffered that burn while at the restaurant, this whole case was turned upside down. Or have you not grasped that yet? Um, what the scallop? Incredible. I didn't anticipate this twist of events. I'm sorry to say, Miss Brett. You will have to forget your luncheon engagement. Uh, but your excellency! The justice system in our country may be in its infancy, but rest assured, our re all reasonable doubt must be dispelled before I am prepared to pass judgment. Thank you, your excellency. Are we doing that on Omega? Sure! Oh. Don't like that. Hmm. Oh. You motherfucker. I am studying in your country, after all. Why have you been speaking through an interpreter? 
My mother tongue, the Queen's English, is the most refined and elegant language in the world. Boy, no one would know. Absolutely not. As a gentlewoman, I try to avoid speaking in your vulgar tones as much as possible. What a bitch. Least racist British woman. <laughs> But it seems the men in this land possess none of the chivalrous virtues of English gentlemen. So I can see that I shall have to lower myself to communicating with you all on you, your own level. Oh, uh, well, you are the epitome of a true English gentlewoman. We are honored by this lavish consideration you graciously afford us. Blank Mitten, thank you for the $50! She's such a good first case villain. She, she is pretty good. I see. In that case, Miss Brent, I will now ask you to testify in your own words about the events leading up to the death of the victim, Dr. Wilson. So, we're finally going to hear her own words on the matter. Things are getting interesting, Ryunosuke. We love casting spells. Hard leg! Thank you for the five gifted. If you didn't get one, dodge and chat. As simple as that. Unfortunately, I have no idea when the poor man burnt his wrist like that. When the waiter brought my steak, the professor and I raised our glasses in a toast. As far as I've heard, the post-mortem report showed no other possible cause of death besides the gunshot. If there's some other way a man's life can be taken without leaving a trace, please do show me. But of course, this country's inferior investigative techniques probably wouldn't pick up on it anyway. She needs to go to jail for a billion years. She's literally like, your police are too stupid. They're not smart enough to figure out what poison is. Really, legitimately just racist. Forgive me. I do hope I haven't insulted anyone. What a fucking loser. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. Well, you'll have to forgive the irritation, Miss Brett, and put up with cross-examination now. I expect you've noticed this little bully of a student, as you put it, doesn't miss much. This is your final cross-examination. We got it. Love it. Yes, Your Excellency. Then you may proceed with a cross examination. We got a Guido. A Guido. Buckland TCG, thank you for the prime. Unfortunately, I have no idea where the poor man yes. burned his wrist like that. Shut the fuck up, you're lying. Do you think so? Let me ask you something. Ever since I arrived at this courtroom, and even still now, the fly on those unsightly black trousers of yours has been wide open. Who's looking? You cannot have noticed, can you? Oh, it really is down. Ha ha! What fun! You hadn't realized. The dear lady is absolutely right! As your friend, you've embarrassed me as well as yourself, Ryunosuke. Why didn't you tell me? Dr. Wilson was a true English gentleman. Whoa, what happened with her nose there? You chose honorable silence over such a vulgar scream. Can your tiny brains imagine such a- Please die. Oh yes, I think my tiny brain can. Well, I can't. Anyway. Yes! <clears throat> we know that you didn't. Interesting. Damn you. <laughs> I think it means the exact opposite. Anyway. Yes. Yes, it's written here in the paperwork. Yes. 
Luckily for all of us, a little burn on the wrist isn't going to kill us. And as there were no other signs of trauma on the victim's body to indicate some other cause of death, it can only have been the bullet from your gun that put an end to this innocent man's life. It doesn't make sense. The burn must have happened straight away when the plate was first brought to the table by the waiter. And if the victim burnt his wrist on the hot plate as soon as it was brought from the kitchen, then he must have already been dead at that point. And yet, the fact is, the victim was killed by a gunshot to the chest. We don't have any evidence that says that shit. Yes! Without leaving a trace, someone is shot or strangled or stabbed or thrown from a height. However, a person's life is taken, there are telltale traces on the body. Quite right, dear lady. And as our police force has thoroughly examined the body of the deceased, there can be no doubt. Isn't that right, Inspector Hosanaga? As I've said, I always aim for a flawless investigation. You've done such a great job today. There is another way. If heaven forbid you doubt me, young man, you're going to have to tell everybody exactly how you think the professor did lose his life. Otherwise, I'm afraid your argument falls rather flat, doesn't it? We need some evidence to back us up here. Yes, we do, but I don't have any. Can you please shut yes. the fuck up? What do you mean by that? In the lands of the Great British Empire, the police store everything found at a crime scene for later examination. But in this country, you investigate once and that's the end of it. Isn't that so? Quite right. La Carnival is open for business as usual today, just days after the incident. Exactly. Which means that even if the investigation takes a different direction, Wait. vital evidence may be lost. Whoa! Hey, whoa, hey, whoa, hey. What the fuck is that? Hello? about the other guy. About the person standing next to her. Inspector Hosanaga. He reacted strangely to her last statement. I wondering if it might be significant. Try pressing her on that last statement one more time. But this time, instead of targeting the woman, let's see what we can get out of the detective. Inferior? What do you mean by that? Wait. Wait. <laughs> there it is again. The detective's reaction is just the same as before. Why? Things are very different now. For this testimony, the detective is just listening to what the Englishwoman has to say. This could be a golden opportunity. When people are actually testifying, they're usually very careful not to let anything slip. However, when they're listening to someone else speak, you'll find they often let their guard down. Oh my god. This is an unbelievable banger. You're right. Look at him. He's lost in his own thoughts. Pursue this man. At the moment, we're focused on Miss Brent. By going to A, you can turn your attention to other people on the stand. Pursue them with space. Excuse me! 
Excuse me! What the? What's the meaning of this? <coughs> this is a fucking Professor Layton mechanic? This is so funny. I'm so sorry. I, I didn't mean to shock you. It looks like you were thinking something just now, Inspector. Perhaps, having heard what the lady next to you had to say... If there's something you'd like to say, please share it with the court. What is the meaning of this? It's the delightful English woman who's testifying in the moment. If you can't find fault with her testimony, then the cross-examination should be over immediately. Oh, is, is that how it works? Absolutely not. <laughs> the detective is in the stand, which makes him a valid witness. Yes, yeah, not to mention the fact that he's intimately involved in the case. Hosanaga, do you have something to add? Yes, if you don't mind, I would like to speak. The lady is right. Our country's police practices are not as modern as those used in Great Britain. Which is why I, Satoru Hosonaga, always strive to make every investigation I'm involved in flawless. What do you mean by that? I'll tell you what I mean. I won't have evidence lacking on my watch. I'm not afraid to take everything I can from the scene of the crime. It's preserving evidence, you see. I don't care if they call me a crime scene thief. I'm not ashamed of what I've done. <coughs> Crime scene thief. Well, looks like the lady's remarks touched a nerve there. Take this, for example. Is that... This is the bottle of carbonated water that I took to the victim's table on the day in question. And yes, it's lost all of its fizz, having been opened three days ago by now, but it was carbonated water. Yes, there's some left in the bottle. One day, our police force will be among the best in the world. The time is coming, I guarantee it! <coughs> Can't say I condone the witness's actions, but I do understand the sentiment. Well, well... Time to take a look at that bottle. French. Must be very expensive water. Don't you say that you don't know. How interesting. I've got a way that someone could be killed without necessarily leaving a mark. How about this, you stinking idiot? Yes! What is this? The bottle of water? Actually, there is one method of killing a man without leaving a trace that comes to mind. Obviously, I'm referring. Poison. Poison? On the day of his death, we know that Dr. Wilson drank from this bottle of carbonated water. Could it be there was poison inside? Could it be the professor actually died after taking a sip from his glass? This is outrageous to suggest such a thing without a scrap of evidence. Have you forgotten we have only just signed an accord of friendship with the British Empire? Have you even the vaguest inkling that your rash accusations could jeopardize the entire treaty? 
This is not a political arena. This is a trial to determine one individual's guilt with respect to one crime. What? The fact that this woman is British makes no difference. We are here to determine the truth. <laughs> Ahem, if I may. I will silence you forever for this disgraceful- <laughs> It is you who should be silent. Uh, of course. Dear lady! Where did that come from? We actually got white woman jump scared there. I'm afraid I may have spoken unfairly before. I offer my most humble apologies. I described your police force as inferior. You investigated this particular point thoroughly, I believe. The bottle, Inspector, and whether it contained poison or not. Of course. Shit! You did? <laughs> have you forgotten what my guiding principle is already? I strive for a flawless investigation every time. I don't believe it. Naturally, we tested the inside of the bottle and its contents. And what did you find, Inspector? I ordered tests for every toxin that's available in this country at the present time. I hate to do this. There's actually two potential outcomes that I think are both equally funny. Firstly, he said that he didn't see if he took a drink of it. Could it be that the water had the antidote to a poison that was found in something else? Second, it was carbonated water. What if the poison was the gas with which it was carbonated? Those are my two, those are my two thrusts. I'm very grateful to all you Japanese. You've successfully established my complete innocence in this horrid affair. Thank you. Oh, but of course, dear lady. Fuck. This can't be right. Everything falls into place if he was poisoned. Thank you, counsel. I think the cross-examination has clarified everything. As the prosecution has asserted, a shot to the chest from the gun is the only conceivable cause of death. Furthermore... The accused, who by his own admission was holding this weapon, is the only possible culprit. Please shut the fuck up. Oh no. I'm just glad the matter is resolved. Before proceeding, I must ask the counsel for the defense. Do you have any further new evidence to present to the court at this point? We gotta have something. Fuck, we gotta have something. I'm sorry, Ryanosuke. I have nothing more. Well, if you'll excuse me now, I really must be leaving. No, don't let her leave! Hold it. Ouchie? Whoa, the fuck? Please wait. What is the meaning of this? Forgive me for intruding on court proceedings, Your Excellency. Suzato Miko Toba, Judicial Assistant to the Defense. Are you? <laughs> really? I can't not play it. A fucking three-parter? I gotta finish it. Good luck, dum-dum. A judicial assistant, the rules state, females are not permitted in this court of law. Yes, I fully understand. I ask for only five minutes of time. I know we're not allowed in. I just need to be in for a very short period of time. Down? No, you just want to reorient yourself. Thank you. I'm most grateful. Hi. Who are you? I'm sorry, there's no time. Accept this for now. A report written in English. It's her research.
girl. Hmm. Special characteristics of Curare. There's too little time for me to read it in detail. I've surmised what I could on a note just inside the cover. If you think it could be valuable, please cast your eye over it. Thank you. Bye then, and good luck. I do. Yielding stare of a Japanese warrior. Well, Miss Brent, yes, Your Excellency? If you wouldn't mind, perhaps you could grace us with your presence a little longer. It's a delightful invitation, but I'm afraid it's not very long till tea time. Shut the fuck up! That's not how it works. I realize it was phrased as a question, however, I must ask you to treat it as an order. I've said it many times before, but the Japanese language makes no sense. My apologies, dear lady. Council, what is the new evidence? All right, let's go for it. Let's see if we can look at it real quick. Poison made from the bark of certain trees in the jungles of South America. The hunters in their region have used it since ancient times to incapacitate their prey. Instant paralysis of the entire body and subsequent death. The poison enters the body through a wound. Due to its ability to render the human body paralytic, it is believed the toxin would have an application as an anesthetic. Oh my god. She poisoned him. It would show up on toxicology as an anesthetic. And then the shot would be the cause of death. This is the smartest thing ever. Anyway, we're presenting this. Yes! Miss Giselle Brett. We understand you were studying under Dr. Wilson at Yume University, doing research. Research by sheer coincidence, perhaps, into a deadly poison. Where are you going with this, Council? A toxin known as Kurare, Your Excellency. Even the slightest amount of this deadly poison entering body leads to instant death. What? What complete and utter nonsense? I've never even heard of this! You wouldn't have. What do you mean? You fucking suck. You're bad doesn't exist in our country. Doesn't exist. Correct. Which means, no matter what tests the police can do for toxins, they'd never identify it. Why? Because there is no test available. What? <clears throat> order, order, order. Council, does this deadly poison truly exist? According to this report authored by a visiting research student from England, Gurare has long been used by the tribes people of South America as a poison to lace their arrows. It seems it's reasonably well known among European doctors and scientists. To lace their arrows? The report states that it's produced from an extract that grows deep in the Amazonian jungle. It was first brought to Europe at the turn of the century by explorers. Animals shot by arrows laced with Gurare suffer instant death. Doesn't that about sum it up, Miss Brent? Trumpery! If the victim had been administered some of this so-called deadly poison, he would have been squirming and writhing in pain! That's true. What do you have to say to that, Inspector? Well, I don't fucking know anything about this. According to this, it's the other way around. What do you mean? The very fact that the victim didn't show any visible signs of distress is evidence Kurare was used. The moment this toxin enters a person's system, it causes instant paralysis. Afflicted victims lose all strength and are completely unable to move. Even if they are in total agony, there would be no visible signs of pain at all. How terrible. Obviously, if a man lost all strength in his muscles, he'd collapse on the floor. But with a chair under him for support, as Dr. Wilson did, the effects could go largely unnoticed. But I don't follow, Kazuma. That's just paralysis. I thought the poison caused instant death. The full explanation is extremely unpleasant. 
The poison causes immediate paralysis, leaving the victim unable to move. But after a short time, it is so severe it causes the muscles that control respiration to fail. The actual cause of death is suffocation. Awful. That's terrible. To the observer, it would look almost like the victim was slipping peacefully into an endless sleep. But for the victim, his final moments will be a living hell. That is the true nature of this deadly curare poison. And you're suggesting that this bottle contains Attention! it. Th this is all very convenient, isn't it? An unknown poison for which there is no means of testing. What a happy tale for the defense. If I may. All these facts, you think you're... So, this is how you Japanese behave, is it? What? <laughs> you steal another's honest hard work and then announce the results as if you discovered them. I'm appalled. What a loathsome act. Well, Miss Brett, the feeling is mutual. Whatever do you mean? Capitalizing on the unfortunate circumstances of an innocent man to frame him for a heinous crime really is a loathsome act. Wouldn't you agree? This guy. The idea of some poison that doesn't even exist in the great empire of Japan is, is breaking the rules. <clears throat> huh? <laughs> What's so funny? Oh, excuse me. Your excellency. Yes? May I borrow that bottle for a moment, please? Uh, yes. I don't see why not. She's going to drink it. What if she just died? That'd be so funny. Hmm. No sparkle left at all. How appropriate for this shabby affair. <clears throat> Goodness. Whatever is the matter, you all look quite stunned. The bottle was clean, is what you're saying. <laughs> you look quite incredulous, little boy. But of course, that's the simple truth. Thank you for presenting the findings of my research so concisely here in this grand venue. Most kind. Thank you, waiter. Now then, your excellency. Uh, yes, Miss Brent? I should like to be excused now, please. How did that happen? Either she has the antidote, because she's, like, the expert on this. Ooh, I actually have... Ooh. You know what I think it is? Yeah, random digit. That's where my head's at. I think I think it's the glass. The glass has the poison in it. That's why she went to go get it. How did she swallow a whole glass and live to tell the tale? Okay, the water wasn't poisoned. She's built different. Has to have been poison that bottle. No, it could be in the glass. There is no poison in that bottle. What? Why, Ryunosuke? Isn't it obvious if there was poison there, she'd be dead by now. Well, yeah. Oh, 
Okay, now I'm lost. The culprit did put curare poison into Dr. Wilson's carbonated water. The defense refuses to change its position. Attention! Sadie has to go pee. Give me a sec. A smart little dog. She is so good. All right. There's no possible way that bottle could contain poison, so she must have the antidote or something. Uh, oh God. Okay. Not that. Ugh. Oh, fuck the poison. If you ingest the poison, it's fine. It has to get to your bloodstream. Oh, all right, let's try this. Yes. <clears throat> Attention. That's not a valid explanation. No. After all, we don't speak English. That report is gibberish. I, we speak English, you stinking ass idiot. I concur. This report is too extensive. Direct us to the pertinent session. Section, Council. Uh, it's the second one. Special characteristics. left me curious about something. Well, 
It sounds as though indigenous hunters have been using this poison for years and years to lace the heads of the arrows they shoot for prey they're hunting. So we've been led to believe. And the point of hunting is to catch prey to eat. Get to the point, please! If they were to use these laced arrows, doesn't that mean there would be traces of poison left in the prey the hunters were going to eat? So surely the hunters wouldn't want to eat that prey, would they? They'd be eating poison. Good gracious! No, that would be madness! But I actually found the answer to that conundrum in this research paper. Under special characteristics, it says this. The poison starts to work after entering the body through a wound. The mention of what particular detail seemed a little strange to me, though. But it all makes sense when you interpret what's written here like this. When uh, Kurari enters the body through an open wound, it has terrifying effects. However... When it enters the body via the mouth, it has no poisonous effects whatsoever! Miss Brett! You authored this research, you know Kurari's special characteristics, and you knew that you could make a spectacle out of drinking that water without any danger to yourself. You meddling little... Was she gonna say a slur? Rapscallion! Well, Ryanosuke, it turns out. You're an even better lawyer than I thought you'd be. Really? Attention! All of this poison talk is fascinating, I'm sure, but I fail to see how it possibly... So... The ill-bred little puppy has a new toy to play with. Some facts he read in a book. But I'm afraid knowledge doesn't suit you, little boy. It only makes you look silly. What are you trying to say? Your schoolboyish logic has a fatal flaw. Schoolboyish? Flaw. As even your brain has managed to deduce, Kurari is safe to ingest. It seems likely that its effects are neutralized by the acidic nature of the gastric succus. I'm always saying shit like that. Gastric suckers. So if this lethal poison is completely harmless when drunk, the professor wouldn't have died when he swallowed it, would he? That's okay. This actually, this is it. This resolves everything. Good gracious. That's basic science. Even a schoolboy should be able to understand. Order in the court! The logic holds. If the lady and the professor drank the same poison, they would be affected in the same way. Are you trying to suggest... Yes! This curare poison is completely irrelevant to the case on trial. That's right. Surely even a little cockroach like you could understand something as simple as that. I got it. What is this welling up inside me? I've never felt like this before. It's a conviction to break down all the discrepancies. It's so intense, almost rage-like. And more than anything else, it's an animalistic desire to take down my prey. He's gonna say it! Here we go! Objection! Oh! God! <laughs> it's so good! Crush cards, thank you for the raid. You know very well that there's no fatal flaw here. You know exactly why, even though you and he swallowed the same poison, you are alive, but Dr. Wilson is dead. <laughs> and I know it too. Why would Dr. Wilson have been killed by the case? Boom, bitch! This is why! As Miss Brett so readily pointed out, she drank the same water as the professor. However, there was a fundamental and fatal difference between the two. A fatal difference. The toxic effects of curare are only felt when the poison enters the body through an open wound. So for a healthy person with no injuries, drinking it is completely harmless. But... What if there was a wound inside the mouth of the person drinking the poisoned water? Inside?! Yes, like the wound you might have if you had just been to the dentist and had a tooth extracted! <laughs> oh, Miss Brent, you've acknowledged many times in your testimony already that you were well aware of Dr. Wilson's dental appointment that day. So that's it. You use this knowledge. <laughs> Is she... laughing? 
I don't like to repeat myself, but honestly, I can't resist. These childish courtroom games and your half-baked arguments are all so puerile. What? What do you mean? Don't worry, little schoolboy. You'll find out soon enough. Oh! You see, when you leave vital evidence lying around, you never know what might happen to it. I mean, it could just... slip. Oh dear. How careless of me. I'm afraid some crucial evidence may have just been tragically destroyed. Uh... I mean, that's admitting to the crime, right? That... What the fuck? Officer! Fucking kill her! You're wasting her your time. This delightful carpet underneath my feet here was a gift from the British Empire. I assure you it will soak up the water beautifully. You have neither the technology nor the presence of mind to discover- to recover it. Uh... You can thump the bench and shout as much as you like, little boy, but I'm afraid we'll never know now, will we? If there really was poison in the bottle or not. You fucker. And let us not forget, we still have some very compelling evidence left intact. Isn't that right, counsel for the prosecution? Of course, of course! You're referring to this photographic print, I presume, dear lady. That's right, and really, looking at this photograph, it's as clear as day, isn't it? The poor professor was sitting with his back to me. So, of course, the only person who could have shot him from the front is a little schoolboy. Objection! You killed the victim that day, using curare. And then, in order to frame Ryunosuke Naruhudo for the crime, you waited until he picked up the pistol you'd arranged for him to find on the floor before you shot the professor's dead body in the chest with a hidden gun. Then, in the confusion that followed, all you had to do was turn his chair around. You had every opportunity to commit this crime. A hidden gun, you say? And I shot the professor's dead body, did I? Well, I'm terribly sorry, but you don't have a shred of evidence. Fuck, we really don't. Ryunosuke, you've come this far, but now, you gotta fucking go for it, baby. Huh? You told me before that your powers of observation were the one thing you could really depend upon. Well, yes, that's true, but I didn't manage to notice this woman was a foreigner with a swan on her head. So think back again now. Try to remember every last detail about the scene that day. Everything you saw, everything you felt, every color, every smell. I might have something. I may have uncovered another clue. Come on then! Let's wipe this smug smile off the Englishwoman's face with some evidence. God. This is like the craziest first case of all time. Whoa! Whatever it is could be the key to arriving at the truth about all this. It's here somewhere. I mean, it's gotta be this, right? As you've said a number of times now, you strive for perfection in your investigations, don't you? I wonder, therefore, if you perhaps took anything else from the scene of that crime, such as the plate of steak that you took from the table that day. 
Wait a minute! Where are you go- Where are you going with this, little boy? It's just a memory that's been troubling me. What memory? I saw the scene shown in this photographic print with my own eyes that day. And I saw that on the wooden base of the plate the steak was served on was a spattering of blood. Oh, really? And what of it? Obviously, it must have happened when you shot the professor. No, that can't be the case. Take a good look at the photograph and the relative position of everything there. The plate of steak is almost directly behind the victim. If I'm supposed to have shot Dr. Wilson in the chest from the front, there's no way the blood could have ended up directly behind him. Hmm, yes. The blood to have made it onto the plate implies the plate was between the victim and the shooter, which means it must have been sitting opposite from the professor as you were. Giselle Brett. I beg your pardon! Attention! This is beyond ridiculous! Is the court seriously expected to believe something the accused has apparently just remembered seeing? Hold it. Get out the fucking plate, you stinky boo-boo man. This... could be the moment that my entire career in the police force has been leading to. Yes, I took the plate. I took it meat and all! You did what?! I took the steak you had been eating, Miss Brett. I took the steak the sergeant had been eating. And I did it all in the name of justice! Then we can find out for sure whether or not there's a blood stain on the plate. We must examine it now! This guy's fucking crazy. Get the fucking plate out! Get the plate! <laughs> oh my god, don't fade out! I can't do a fourth one. Here is what you ordered. The steak. What about the blood? Is there blood on it? Hope you had a good stream, Chloe. Of course. Examine the plate at your leisure. Fuck! No blood. No blood anywhere. But no, that's impossible. I know I saw it. It was right there on the table. There was blood! What an unbecoming expression, little boy. Oh my god, I can't believe it's real. You see, this is why I always say you can't trust what the Japanese tell you. Hold the fuck up there, lady. I couldn't agree more in the case of this disgrace to the Empire. I believe we might have finally reached a conclusion in this trial. Let's hope so. This let's pretend attempted courtroom proceedings is painful to watch, but I do promise to do my best to forget all about it when it's over. This sorry-looking steak reveals the facts all too clearly. We have to... There's got to be something going on with this fucking steak. There's nothing on this fucking steak. <gasps> oh! Give me that. Do we know any anything else? Anything else interesting about the steak? Doesn't look like it. Ryunosuke, it's not over yet. Not until the final gavel. Never stop believing in yourself. You literally... I had to do this myself 15 minutes ago. Ugh. Maybe I should at least examine the evidence for myself. I did. Your Excellency, please wait. The plate of steak is hiding another clue. The only thing that's shocking here is your unhealthy obs uh, fascination with beef steak. 
<clears throat> I will not be able to turn a blind eye to any more unnecessary procrastination at this trial. I'm sorry, Miss Brett, but we must ensure a thorough examination of the evidence. I will not give a ruling until I'm completely satisfied that all reasonable doubt has been dispelled. I see. As a newly affirmed ally of my country, that's still your position, is it? Thank you, Your Excellency, for doing your fucking job. Under the stake. Gracious! That's... A Koban? What on earth? A Hawaii arrow one at that. Miss Brett. This is in fact the beefsteak that you ordered at the restaurant of the day in question, is it? Tell me... Why is there an old coin hidden underneath this? Ridiculous question. How should I know? I've never seen that thing before in my life. I don't know what it is, but I want no part in it. I fail to see how this is relevant. A corn out of the meat that could have been a careless mistake by the chef in a moment of distraction. Die. Don't be absurd. We're supposed to believe this happened by accident in the kitchen. A rare Hawaii Koban just happens to be hidden underneath a piece of steak. This turns out to be irrelevant to the case. I'll rip up my ticket to Great Britain right now. Your Excellency. Attention! <laughs> By all means, don't let us stop you! Oh my god, even so loud. Perhaps, little boy, you should realize it is you who are irrelevant. The point is, it's essential we ask the owner of the coin if he can explain what it's doing under that stake. The only person it can belong to. We're gonna have to present it. As in Mr. Cucumber something. Ah, yes. The old man who testified earlier alongside the military sergeant, correct? Yes, Your Excellency. I remember him saying he was up to something with his Koban coin when it happened. Exactly the moment the gun was fired. Too busy on the floor. We've got great news, sir. We found your coin. No, no, no! Why would Korek Kutasan's Koban be sandwiched between the beefsteak and its yes. plate? Yeah! Which is why I'm asking to bring Korek Kutasan back to the witness stand so we can ask him! Uh, go, go fucking get him. Oh, do not bring the other guy. No, do not bring the other guy! What's the pun on Korakuta's name? Uh, it's kind of hard, but it's, uh... Let's see if it would... It's Curio Collector is the name of him. His name is Curio Korakuta. <laughs> These don't work as well in English as I wish they had. Uh, Kore Kutasan, we got your fucking coin. Seen this coin? Ah! <laughs> the resplendent, splendiferous Hawaii treasure that my rusty bones managed to misplace that fateful day! Hmm, as I thought. Young man! Enlighten this decrepit old fool! Put me out of my misery! Where was my treasure? Where was it dropped? Uh was in a steak. We found your coin sandwiched between a beef steak and its plate. S sandwiched? Soaking? Seriously? 
Clearly it couldn't have fallen there by accident, which means somebody must have hidden it there on purpose. Why? Who would do such a thing? Well, I've got to guess. <clears throat> Excuse me. Could I say something? Uh, sure. Why did you put it in a mode only? I was working undercover. Um. Interesting. So that's why you were sent in undercover, was it? Yes, I took the job of a waiter at the restaurant in order to flush out the criminal. It seemed likely that this Koban incident is the work of the same thief. Hmm, so unbeknownst to us, there was a master thief at work in the restaurant on a regular basis. The place was already the scene of several crimes, it seems. I don't know about the master thief part, but... The identity of the person who stole and hid Kore, Kore Kutasan's Koban is all too clear. What? Uh, what? What? Who, who stole it and hid it under the stake? Oh my god, I mean, it could be Jezel Brett. It could be fucking John H. Wilson. I'm gonna say it's her. Take that! <clears throat> yes, it seems like a likely candidate. No, come on, Ryanosuke. Not as much as you shocked me. No one could have approached that table unnoticed. be Isonosa? Take that! It can only be you. Sergeant Isonosa! What? Uh, how? How, how, how dare you? How dare you, you monster? Monster? I stole that Koban, did I? I'm the master thief of La Carnival, am I? You're seriously accusing me of these crimes, cadet? But it wasn't me. It was the fucking baby. You would push the blame for your crimes onto your own son, an innocent little baby. It's you who's the monster, Sergeant Noza. If this is going to be an adult pretending to be a baby, I'm going to shit myself. Nippon Imperial Army, Sergeant Ayesanosa, prepare to stand down in the Supreme Court, sir. What's going on here? Do any of you know uh, the extraordinarily low wages the Nippon Imperial Army pays those that expect to keep our so country safe? Uh, yeah. All I want is to put a hot meal on the table for my son. That's why you were stealing things at the restaurant? The place is heaving with money! Every three days, I'd go there and do reconnaissance for Target. And I'd enjoy chomping my way through a good steak at the same time! Uh, okay. And your target was this old man and his Koban? Yes, sir. I slipped the coin into my pocket without any trouble at all. You fucking asshole! I was all set to leave the steak, I was halfway through devouring when it happened. Bang! Yes, when the professor was shot. I knew that if the police conducted a search and found the coin in my pocket, I'd be finished. So I hid the incriminating evidence as fast as I could on the double. I slipped it underneath the stake. And then he swapped the stake, hoping that I'd be able to rendezvous with it again at a later date. Okay. This is ridiculous. Miss Brett. Oh, of course, dear lady. How rude of us. I'm quite sure there's no need to detain you any longer at all. What the fuck? She's the prime suspect. No. <clears throat> of course it is. Hiding a coin under a lump of meat. 
The sheer nonsense of such an idea astounds me. Nonsense? He just said he did it. Ah, oh, well, oof. No, keep talking. And as for picking up your steak and biting into it without using a knife and a fork, it's beyond nonsense. It's pure madness. Okay, I shut up. Whoa, hey, whoa! Hold it! And good day. Ryunosuke, what's the matter with you? Oh no, it's just... Something about Miss Brett's parting words there got me thinking. I got it. Figured it out. Objection, asshole! Hold it! Let's go. Miss Brett! What is it now? I'm afraid, just one last time, there's something I'd like to ask you. I'd like to ask you to explain the contradiction in your parting words from just a few moments ago. What are you talking about? What contradiction? I'm still here! Fucking Christ. Oh, Jesus. They, they don't have to reshow it. I was paying attention. Yes, I'm right. Uh, wrong one. Fuck. Okay, hold up. I got the- I got the other one. It's so stupid. It's the same fucking picture. Take the Miss Brent had been eating before the professor was killed. Yes, go on. More accurately, Your Excellency. The steak that was on the victim's table before the professor was killed. Now you're just splitting hairs. Both pictures had the steak on the table. Doesn't something about the steak strike you as very unnatural? The shape of the edge where it's been eaten. One had it in better focus. Oh, all right. A few moments ago, Miss Brett claimed no Englishman could ever contemplate handling a steak and biting into it without a knife and a fork. A now take a good look at this steak, particularly the edge where it's been eaten. That's a bite mark. Looks like Miss Brett has realized something. So if the witnesses she claims wouldn't contemplate eating anything without a knife and fork, there shouldn't be teeth marks in the steak at all. Uh, but what is your actual point? Perhaps the... Oh, whatever you say, dear lady. As I said, I really must be leaving now. Afternoon tea with the Minister of Justice cannot possibly wait any longer. Of course, of course! I've heard enough. You irritating little spectacled samurai relic. Literally just throwing out slurs. The witness knows what this means. She's realized the catastrophic implications these teeth marks in the stake have for her. I know where I'm going. You gotta fucking... You, let me cook! It's all coming together. The mysterious teeth marks in the stake that had been eaten with cutlery. The missing spat of blood. In the confusion, we swapped the fucking stakes. Shut up. Come on. Conclusive evidence? How many times have I heard that today? Typical Japanese empty threats. Ugh. Attention! 
What the fuck? There can't be more evidence. I guess we have it. Oh, he said it. There is someone who has it. Someone in this very courtroom. That person is willing to submit the piece of evidence I'm referring to. It will solve every remaining mystery about this case. Who possesses the conclusive evidence that will reveal the truth about this whole affair? It's gotta be Isonosa. It, it's just gonna be his teeth. Gotta be Isonosa. Take that! Oh, come on! Okay, last one. I know who's got it. I know who's got it. Hosanaga. Take that. The answer is obvious. Inspector Hosanaga. You think I've been <laughs> withholding conclusive evidence? No, no, no. I'm not saying that. Everyone's attention has been focused on the stake with the teeth marks. Yes. Now, earlier this afternoon, Sergeant Nosa told the court the following. I'd enjoy chomping my way through a good stake. He admitted to stealing Kore Korekutasan's coin and told us he had slipped it under the stake. You watch it, cadet. I'm a superior officer. Sergeant Nosa, could you confirm something for me? Was the stake you put in the coin under, in fact, your own stake? Tension! Affirmative, of course. Might be a soldier in the Imperial Nippon Army, but I certainly... I'm not brave enough to ask a foreign gentle lady if she'd mind me manhandling her meal to hide some in it. In other words, the stake the detective submitted as evidence earlier was in fact Sergeant Nosa's meal. But that makes no sense! The plate was taken from the victim's table! Oh, that's crazy. Yet the gentlewoman doesn't take bites out of her stake, nor did she have any opportunity to steal the coin. Of course I didn't steal it! To even suggest such a thing would be... How do you explain this paradox? Exactly! Surely you're not going to suggest that the sergeant switched the two stakes over! Uh, I literally am. You did! <laughs> well, uh, after it happened, the, uh... <laughs> when I saw the civilian had been murdered right in front of my eyes like that, I panicked. As I said, I immediately lifted my stake up and hid the cord underneath it, but then when the waiter announced he was an undercover policeman, I thought I'd had it. If he decided to investigate my slab of meat, that'd be it. I'd begin my marching orders. So I fucking swapped the stakes. You can't have... I never saw you do such a thing. I'm epic. Operation Lightning Bolt. Unbelievable! <clears throat> However, fear not, Prosecutor San. Oh, thank. That is all I did, sir. All you did? Well, well, well. Inspector, do you have the other stake? Oh, she's gonna fucking die. That's correct. I would like to see the other steak, please. Oh, beautiful. Oh my god. A cold slab of tough meat. It can have the slightest bearing on this case. No, you're not wriggling your way out of it this time, lady. I beg your pardon. Surely you're not that forgetful. 
Surely you remember the reason why this steak pan promises to prove such a problem for you. <laughs> You're the ones who decided it was a problem, not me. The reason the defense asked to see the plate was to confirm something the defendant remembers seeing. Thinks he remembers. I'm quite sure of what I saw, Miss Brett. On the side of the plate that was in the table directly beside Dr. Wilson, there was a clear splattering of blood. I believe the defendant's memory serves him well. And now we have the evidence to prove it. The plate you were eating from, Miss Brett. Get the fucking plate! Get the goddamn plate! I hear ya. I like him a lot. I like the inspector a great deal. Sorry for keeping <gasps> It's got the fucking blood! It's got the blood! In other words, it's impossible for Naruhodo-san to have shot the victim. It can't be! In fact, there's only one person who could have possibly shot Dr. Wilson from the front. I'm sure everyone knows by now who that person is. <laughs> is it time for a white woman jump scare? Miss Jezail Brett! By a Japanese! <laughs> oh no! Oh no! <laughs> They're going crazy! Oh no, there's even a little black one. Uh, <laughs> you got the black one. <laughs> okay. This is the greatest series of all time. Please excuse my little outburst. I briefly lost my composure. Oh my God, is she keeping it up? Well, Miss Brett, I think it's time you told the court what actually happened that day. The truth this time. It was I who took the professor's life using Kurare. BOOM! As you surmised, I chose that particular day for one very important reason. The professor had a dental appointment for the extraction of one of his teeth in the morning. So you planned to kill the professor, knowing that no trace of poison would be found in his water. Because Kurare is unheard of here in Japan. Yes. Of course, I never intended to remain at the restaurant for as long as I did. I only needed to see the professor take a tiny sip and it would all be over. I placed the steak I'd ordered in front of him to make it appear as though he had been dining alone, and leave immediately. However, before any of that happened, there was an unexpected visitor at the professor's table. That would be me, I suppose. Yes, you. Who else? Such a trifling matter, but the fact that you decided to come over to greet the professor meant that I had lost my chance to slip away unnoticed. In due course, the professor took a sip of his water and was paralyzed. I made sure he was sitting in his chair such that he wouldn't fall. There was no going back at that point, so I concocted a plan at the spur of the moment. A plan to pin Dr. Wilson's murder on this innocent man. I happened to know that the professor always carried a gun. I decided to use that fact to my advantage. I had the bottle of curare in my handbag and my own pistol concealed under my skirt. So I was right. There were two guns and I should have just lifted off the fucking skirt. Yes. And then I finished my coffee and got up to leave. That's when I noticed the professor's gun, which you had presumably placed on the floor. 
place where you were sure I would notice it. And everything went according to plan. You noticed the gun as I'd intended. And then, just as you bent down to pick it up, bang. That's when you shot the professor with your own gun. Even though at that point, he was already dead. Naturally, the gunshot caused commotion, at which point the waiter appeared. Obviously, I assume Naruhodo-san was the culprit and apprehended him. I took him to the pantry that joins the kitchen and locked him inside. That's when I took the opportunity to turn the professor in his chair around. Because, of course, you needed to make it look like the defendant had shot Dr. Wilson from where he'd picked up the gun. So there you have it. That is the entirety of my misdemeanor. It's actually a felony here. Your Excellency. Yes? I wonder. Might I speak with you in private later? Mm. Why did he say yes? Uh, it would seem this trial has run its course. Owl Bear, thank you for the five gifties. I presume the prosecution is in agreement. This can't be! Ouchie doesn't lose! Uh, you better start getting used to tough opposition. Arr! This insult to the Ouchie family name will never be forgotten! Wait, so is this guy's name Payne Ouchie? Oh my god, don't fucking pull out the sword. Oh! A thousand millennia may pass. And still the Auchi clan will never measure up to the Naruhodo. Okay. Let's, uh... Let's, uh, call it. <laughs> I thank you, Your Excellency. The use of evidence and deduction to unravel the truth is a modern methodology. After all, it has only been a few short decades since our country opened its doors to the wider world. The Western ideas of science are rapidly gaining acceptance here. I feel sure science will soon bring new methods of investigation and procedures of justice. A new future of law awaits, but what it will look like I cannot begin to imagine. That is for the young to pursue. Kazuma Asogi. Yes? After this trial, you are set to embark on a journey of discovery to the illustrious British Empire. Learn all you can. Absorb everything of the wider world that you are able to. And do not forget to fulfill the mission imposed upon you. I understand, Your Excellency. What was that about? Why do you look so grave all of a sudden? Never mind. As for you, Ryanosuke Naruhodo. In you I sense unusual potential. I very much look forward to seeing how you carry that on. Thank you, Your Excellency. It is time to deliver the final verdict. I hereby find the defendant, Ryunosuke Naruhodo. Confetti? Yeah! So easy, baby. So easy. Oh, the allegations. I can't believe it. I made it! I defended myself and made it through the trial! Ryanosuke, you finally pulled it off. Congratulations! I couldn't have done it without you. Thank you, Kazuma. <laughs> no, it was a pleasure to watch you work. So you owe me an extra large sukiyaki from the place on Yume University Street. Don't you forget. 
Good afternoon. All your hard work has certainly paid off. Oh, it's this girl. Congratulations to both of you for providing Naruhodo-san's innocence. Proving. Providing. Ah, uh, our trusty judicial assistant. You worked hard for that result too, you know. Oh no, I didn't do any- Oh no, I actually did. Yeah, I, I now remember. I did a whole shitload. If we hadn't had that research report of Miss Bratz, I don't know how things would have turned out. Your kind words should really be for my father. I was simply doing as he asked. Your father? Oh, great. Hi. Hello, sir. Naruhodo, you did an excellent job. Thank you, Professor? Oh, no, it is I who should be thanking you. After all, your efforts exposed the true criminal that took the life of my good friend. It was you who actually invited Dr. Wilson to Yume University, wasn't it? Yes, that's right. Professor Mikitoba studied overseas himself. He went to study forensic medicine in Great Britain. Presumably, that's when you met Dr. Wilson. Exactly. In those days, we worked together in the same hospital. The Hottie Clinic. It was a long time ago now. Besides, it's your turn, Miss Odie. Great Britain is a magnificent country. It leads the world in science, medicine, engineering, culture, and of course in law. Watch and learn, my boy. See what's happening in the world's largest melting pot. For now. I'll learn all I can. I swear on this, the spirit of the Asogi clan. I'm taking that sword to Great Britain, are you? Yes, I am taking the fucking sword. He really is taking the sword. It's not easy to tell you this, but... What do you mean? She's gonna face trial herself now. She's the culprit. She will be leaving Japan in the very near future. For Shanghai. Shanghai? Jessel Brett will not appear in court again in this country. I'm certain of that. Why not? It's a matter of consular jurisdiction. Inspector Hosonaga! a hard-fought battle in the courtroom today. Very impressive to watch. I must congrat- what, what is going on? We cannot try this particular foreigner for her crimes here in Japan. She's going to the British court system. My consular court? I don't understand. I thought consular courts were a thing of the past now that we've signed the friendship treaty. Yes, in normal circumstances, you're right. Can't they? She's a student, but it doesn't justify our government's making secret agreements about her fate, does it? Something strange is going on. I'm afraid that young student... Today's trial was nothing more than a game all along. There was never any danger of comeuppance for her. We can make a change. This is a time of great turmoil. New era heralded by the start of the 20th century. One day, I have no doubt, that woman will receive the judgment she deserves. This change is coming, and we're the ones driving it. Well, I think that's enough seriousness for now. Let's go get drunk. You can come too, dumbass. Free food. Free food. So Giselle Brett won't be tried here. I suppose that means I'll never know. I'll never find out why she killed Dr. Wilson. Or will I? Kazuma. 
I just wanted to say thanks again, that's all. <laughs> I didn't do a thing, you dumb, stupid ass idiot. Something kept occurring to me over and over again during the trial. Couldn't help but thinking maybe you're the one destined to become the lawyer, not me. Come on, be serious! If I helped you today, it was only right at the very start of the trial. But you have a natural talent for it. Oh no, not me. All that tense verbal combat. I never want to go through that ever again. I just... I just did what you told me to do, that's all. Yeah, you dumb fuck. Listen, Ryunosuke. Do you know what the most crucial weapon is that any lawyer needs in order to win? Knowledge of the law? No. The ability to believe. Aww. These two are very straight. Scrubbian, thank you for the five gifties. Hmm. There's something I want to ask you, actually, Ryunosuke. It's a favor, really. Something very important to me. Hmm. Hi, Hosanaga. Can you fuck off for two seconds? Rickshaws. Wow. All right, thank you. Hmm. Let's pick up a conversation later. We should be celebrating right now. Your first court victory. And your study tour to Great Britain, don't you forget. Ah, uh, yes, that too. So my very first trial came to an end. Kazuma. Professor Mikitoba. Suzato-san, who acted as my assistant. And of course, the fucking inspector. It was because of the help and support of these people I managed to get through the trial. And more importantly, Kazuma hadn't masked his favor of me. Little did I realize just how much it would change my life. That was case one! What the fuck, dude?